Welcome to Marketing Rebels Breaking Business Barriers. You've joined us for a special series called Marketing Momentum for Mental Health. And we have Danielle here today, and she's going to tell us a little bit about herself, why this topic matters to her, and why it should matter to you. Danielle, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Shauna, for having me here and talking about mental health. And the connection for me, I'm going to make it to being a business owner and visibility and the transitions in and out of corporate. And then again, back from entrepreneur in and out of entrepreneurialism as well. So thank you so much for creating this space for us to have these really honest, raw conversations about our mental health and how we ourselves have transitioned through it. Absolutely. And transition is a really great word, I think, for this conversation and for almost any conversation with regard to mental health and entrepreneurship, both separate and together, because there's no static existence of mental health or of entrepreneurship. There's always some sort of fluctuation between a variety of states of being. And I know within your space, you've transitioned into, uh, in, well, actually, let's let's look at the whole journey, <laughs> really, into corporate, out of corporate, into entrepreneurship, back into corporate, into entrepreneurship, and then into both. Let's talk about that, because I know 100% that there are so many people out there who are at least thinking of one of those varieties within their life that they need to navigate and and keep their head about while they're making these choices and experiencing these transformations. Yes, yes. And like you said, they're transitions, they're transformations. And I like what you said at the very beginning around just being, like the sense of being. When I was doing all these different transitions, it, that's one thing I had to learn. And I've learned over the years is that sense of being. And I just have to be. At the end of the day, at the end of the day I have to be me. That's one of my biggest takeaways from this journey around entrepreneurialism and why I focus on specifically visibility, because I had a hard time just being and being me when showing up as a business owner, as whoever I am and whatever role I was in. It was so it was so hard for me because at one, I didn't know who I was at the very beginning. So that was extremely challenging and trying to show up as a business owner when you don't even know who you are. That became challenging to the point where I just I couldn't put myself out anywhere. There was definitely some some mental health happening, um, and I had to make that transition back into corporate. So that that being so being me, whenever you're being visible, whenever I'm being visible, that is something that I really focus on now. I'm not following cookie cutter uh, uh, techniques and strategies and things like that. They're great ideas, but I take what feels good to me. I feel I take what feels good to me at this point in time in my business and my visibility journeys. And I take steps to be more visible because at the end of the day, I found if I'm not me, if I'm hiding me, if I'm not allowing me to be and be expressed, that's where I run into issues where it really impacts my mental health. And so you were saying that when you, your first transition into entrepreneurship, when you left corporate and you dove in, there were, there were a lot of ups and downs to ride. I mean, you're, you're a published author. You would think, Hey, look at me. I've got my credibility. I do all this, uh, you know, from the outsider's view, that looks like, Hey, you've got it made in the sun, made in the, made in the shade is the way I like to <laughs> I sit in the sun, full disclosure, if we're being authentic, I usually actually don't sit in the shade. I sit in the sun. I love the sunlight. I soak it up. I'm a sun witch. What can I say? But <laughs> made in the shade is the term. But truly from the outside, from the outside looking in, um, you're good. You're golden. Yeah, it makes sense. Why wouldn't you be an entrepreneur? But it, it didn't work with that way for you. Absolutely not. You think all oh, easy peasy. When I stepped out of corporate the first time, I was literally on my 40th birthday. I got to this birthday and I was really trying to hide. I look back and I think, yep, now it was one of those pivotal moments in my life where I really had to start looking in the mirror, understanding where was I in life? What was I happy about? What was I doing? What I was, what was I unhappy about? And realizing there was a lot of challenges I was facing in my career. I realized I was on a career path that no longer aligned or felt good to me. The problem was I had no idea what felt good. I took the step off 
the ladder from corporate. I became an entrepreneur because the internet at the time made it seem oh, easy peasy. Just throw your business from your laptop. Let's no be problem. Fair, it still does that. <laughs> Let, it still does that. That People say that it's like, that's all right. Make one post, build it, and they will come. Yeah. Yeah. So no, it's really not, not the field of dreams that we think it is. <laughs> um, it can be, though when there's different elements um, that you have behind you in a really strong foundation. I don't want to say it can't exist, but there's a lot of work that has to happen it's in order to create things. Yes. The right. field of dreams. Yes. And for me, that step out of corporate into becoming an entrepreneur, that's a, it was a big struggle for me because I had spent 20 years in corporate on fortune 500 background. That's my, that was my experience to no longer have a big company title to say, oh, I work for X and to ride their coattails and their reputation. I no longer had that. And then without my title and my salary, it became who, who am I? Ooh, who am so I? Scary. Yeah. And as an entrepreneur, that's part of your unique value. It's really showcasing who are you? How are you different? What do you do that's different? And so that transition out from corporate into entrepreneurialism the first time was very challenging because I didn't know who I was. And yet at the same time, you had to know that in order to start a business or at least have a, a, a semblance of what that could be. I didn't. And when I started showing up at entrepreneur events as who I was in corporate, I was continually faced with Mm, you know what, maybe because I, I dress corporate, I love the way I dress. I, but I, again, transitioning out, I was not sure who I was and trying to discover who I am, my voice, things like that. And I got a lot of, well, you know, come into these rooms, look at what everyone else is wearing, and dress more like them. I was apparently making other people uncomfortable, people were afraid to approach me because I had a different look to myself. And so I thought, okay, well, these are people who know what they're talking about. I'm new to entrepreneurialism. This whole world is just so different to me. I'm going to believe them. I'm going to listen to them and understand, okay, well, I, I, I guess who I'm showing up as, that's, that's wrong. But then it became when I tried dressing and showing up the way I was told I should, it felt even more wrong, yet it became, I don't know what else to do because I don't know who I am. And who I'm trying to be, neither one, like I didn't know who I was and trying to be someone else just didn't feel good. And I just, and I just, I was crumbling. I was crumbling on the inside. Right. It's at that, it sounds like as you're describing, I'm picturing, I'm, I'm picturing Danielle wandering through this maze, lost, just, I went from being lost to being lost. How does that even happen? <laughs> Lost to lost her. <laughs> That's it. Somebody picked you up from one maze only to put you in another labyrinth and said, ah, good luck. Like, that yeah. That's hard. That is so hard. And so you made another big transition. Yeah. You went back. Went back. I returned. It's a whole yeah. different set of mind games, for lack of a better word. Yes. And when I returned, so I was in my first business for about two and a half years. And I was struggling. I was I afraid to be seen and heard as myself, understanding what is my true unique voice. I'm a people person. I don't want people to to not like me. But I had a hard time putting myself out there. And if you can't be seen and heard as an entrepreneur, you can't be found and hired to do what it is that you really want want to do or feel called to do. Because I could not be visible. And I couldn't be visible as me. I was uncomfortable as me. There were moments where I had those shining lights where I felt like I was alive and I could do this. They were few and far between. Right. The impact was then on my mental health was I'm not good enough. Putting myself out there, especially when it came to video, I had a fear of cameras. I It became, I'm not pretty enough. People don't wanna hear what I have to say. I don't even know what I want to say. And because I wasn't able to grow my business the way I thought I could, the way I imagined, I wasn't able to transition the success I had in corporate into success in my business the way I wanted it and saw it. There was a lot of shame. There was a lot of guilt for putting my family through me trying to build a business, me not being able to support them the way I used to be able to support them. We weren't able to do the things 
that we had previously been able to do like dinners out and vacations on planes. And I felt that was my fault. It's my fault. There was something wrong with me because I couldn't figure me out. I just, and so it became this, this guilt and shame. When I returned to corporate, I remember I told five people. I only let five people know, listen, this is what I'm doing. They each said, do what you gotta do. It's the end of the day, you gotta pay your bills. And when I transitioned to corporate, it was with this, I was so, I wasn't believing in myself. My confidence was shattered because of that and the mental state I was in. And I was in a space where I think from a mental health, it was, I was very negative about myself. The image I had about myself was very poor. How I talked to myself was not very pretty. And it ended up with me being much more invisible, more visible than I already was invisible as a business owner. And I took that feeling and that image I had of myself and I brought it with me into corporate. Right. When I returned to corporate, it meant then, because I had this lower self-image, this lower self-esteem of myself, next to no confidence, I took roles that were way below my experience, the quality and the value that I could offer companies. I would show up. Like, you know me, Shauna, I'm, I'm a heel girl. Then the gr day I love heels. Shoes mm -hmm. are my thing. <laughs> I, when I returned to corporate that first time, it took about a year before I even wore a heel into the workplace because it meant no one else was wearing heels and it meant I'd have to stand out. I would have to not conform. I couldn't be myself. So I went from not feeling like I could be myself and not knowing who I was as an entrepreneur to not being myself and feeling like I could be myself in, in corporate. Until finally one day, it became this, almost like this shout from inside to say, be you. Forget what everyone else is saying, forget what else anyone else is gonna think or believe, you have to be you. And I started wearing heels. That's when I, I changed my wardrobe again and hmm. I started wearing my heels and I stopped, I stopped caring. It's uh, there's some something somebody said to me um, at the beginning of my own journey uh, was you've got to get to the point where you're tired of your own BS. Yeah, yes. and that and it's and it gets there. You, you're just yeah, and you know, <laughs> I just I it makes me smile because I think of I just think of this moment when you're staring at those damn sneakers that you don't want to wear. I mean, I love my sneakers. Look, I love my sneakers. <laughs> I love my little cowboy boots. I'm a bumpkin, but I know you. And that's not, I can, no, no. I'm wearing the ridiculously high stiletto heels that would break Shauna's neck. I'm wearing those. <laughs> and, I, and you're, okay, for anybody, <laughs> for anyone who's just new to Danielle's world, let me tell you. You walk into, uh, you're sitting in a room. Let's just say you're sitting in a room and Danielle walks into the room. There is a presence. So I can imagine, I can just imagine that first transition into entrepreneurship, people going, oh, who that? <laughs> Who's that? Like that would be, a, it would be a thing. Yes. A little bit intimidating at first, but then you get to know her and then you go, dang, I can be that. I can, oh. I can walk into this place and hold myself like that. That's something. And so that transition is very, very pivotal. Getting, getting fed up with your own BS and doing the work. Because I can't imagine that it was just like that. I can't imagine you just pressed a button and then it was all over. So no, it was, the, yeah, it was the baby steps. Definitely the baby steps. But it became almost as if that the real me just needed to be expressed. She needed to come out. She was tired of being hidden. She was tired of playing small. It just became enough is enough. And it was like this, almost this internal scream. And I finally listened and said, oh, okay, we're gonna just take these little baby steps though, because I was still coming from the place of, I, I, I wasn't so confident in myself, but I was starting to get angry of, the, that entrepreneurial journey and being afraid and hiding and not allowing myself to express myself. And then this anger around, I can't believe I listened to other people who were trying to smother me and make me conform when I'm when, as an entrepreneur, 
that's you know you don't want to that's part of who you are it's how it sets you apart and i got really angry at listening to other people and not listening to myself listening to the external environment the conditions and the circumstances and other people's voices and not listening to my own your own wisdom yeah yeah there's, that there's so wisdom. much wisdom in there and when you get to that space where you're so lost when your mental health suffers in a variety of different ways for everyone it's different yeah it's like the outside world is getting so loud that you can't hear your inner wisdom and that connection with your inner self can really make all the difference transformation absolutely yeah yeah and so it was that experience then of, of not allowing me to to feel like me in these different worlds when i had the idea for the tv show the c-suite and i yes. pitched it and then i i you know we accepted it rogers accepted it and i said okay i'm going to produce it. i'm going to host it it became i want to create this space where people felt really safe showing up as themselves knowing that someone has their back there is no ulterior motives i was there to support them and cheer them on as a host and make it make them feel as comfortable as possible whatever that meant for them i can the attest most to that because <laughs> i was on that yeah. show <laughs> i was i was there and this and that was during a time um just to give some perspective that was during a time when i was learning how to change my language around how i showed up i was showing up i had been showing up for a long time um but i had been telling myself the lie that I'm a writer, not a speaker. And I remember I told you this. I said, mm -hmm. this is my first time doing this thing and it's going on TV and it, oh my gosh. Um, but truly the space that you were able to create from your own pain, because yeah. it is pain that creates transformation and, and it grows your heart. You're able to offer this space to other people and give them the confidence to go, hey, I, I was just on TV. Like that's a huge deal. That's a huge deal. And and yes, I can attest firsthand that it it, it makes a difference. Thank you. You thank make you. a difference. I Aww, should say. Thank you, Shauna. And if again, again, like you said, it comes from that place of the pain. And I didn't want any anyone else to not grow their business because they could not feel comfortable and then confident being visible in a way that felt good to them. And I think that's that, right. that good to them means that you're listening to that internal voice, whether you call it intuition, gut feeling, whatever you want to, to name it. It's about listening to what feels good to you, because if it feels good to you, it, it allows you to find that courage a lot easier to take those big, scary steps into the unknown to show up as you, to speak out as you, to share who you are and to be you. And creating that space is, is huge. And that's what I did with the show. That was that, that, that desire and that passion to create. It was one, to create, to com connect problems to solutions. The second place is to create this platform, especially right. for female entrepreneurs to be seen, to be heard, so that they could be found and hired. Um, but really to create this space where they felt comfortable. And it came down to the most popular question I ever got asked as a host was, what do I wear? What, what, what should I wear? My response always became, wear what makes you feel good. There's some little, like, little tips and tricks around not using little dots and, and patterns and things like that for TV. However, at the end of the day, wear the color that makes you feel good, which is why I wear a lot of blue, because I love blue. I have blue eyes, so it helps bring that out, but I just feel really good in blue. Yeah. Wear the color you that you feel good and wear your favorite outfit. If you have to wear your favorite outfit 20 times, wear it 20 times. That's why you get it. Yeah, that's <laughs> why you get it. And that's why you love to wear it because it makes you feel like you. It highlights something about you that you love. And so when you love yourself and you're showing up in a way that feels really good to you, your audience will see that. They will feel it. Even if you're nervous, they will sense that, that above, like beyond anything else. So it's all about, yeah, being you and finding ways to do it that feel good to you. So it was the, uh, the evolution of the C-suite, mm -hmm. showing up there, hosting and producing, creating that space for other people. Was that kind of like a, um, a first step towards going back 
into entrepreneurship? Yeah, it ended up, yes. Because when I was doing the, hosting the C-suite, producing and hosting, I was working a full-time job. And then I was also doing this on, on the side. It became my, what I call a side passion. It wasn't a side hustle. This was a side passion. Something I felt absolutely alive doing. It made no sense. I have a degree in microbiology. I have no background in media that broadcasting. Makes me giggle. And, yeah, and remember, <laughs> biology. I, microbiology. <laughs> I'm a science nerd. Love it. Love it. But again, I had no background, and I had that fear of cameras. I had that fear of being seen and heard. It made no sense for me to host a TV show. What I did though was I got help. I got assistance. I got coaching around the mindset piece of being seen and heard and what was holding me back, what was creating the fears. I also got skill set help right. from a coach around how do I connect on camera? How do I create an environment to help my guests feel as safe and comfortable as possible? I did the show for about three seasons. And as it was finishing, my contract was finishing in corporate. And it became this I know I can do this. I know I can be much more visible. I've learned my lessons from before. And I felt like, again, when you think about you know, me staying in corporate at the time, it was just, I know I want to do more. I want to achieve more. I want to create more impact. Listening to that it became okay. Well, I, I wasn't seeing a way to do it in corporate. So let's step out again, learn from my lessons from before, do things very differently. And that's when I stepped out and started focusing on visibility, really helping women female entrepreneurs 40 plus, because I started my journey and visibility journey over 40. It's very mm -hmm. different. I didn't grow up with a camera in my back pocket. I didn't grow up with a lot of video. And I found a lot of other women my age felt the same. So I started doing that work and helping entrepreneurs to release the fears that were holding them back from keeping them play like they're keeping they're playing small, yeah. they're hiding, but they can boost their confidence and then obviously accelerate. When you can be seen and heard, you can be found and hired, you get to accelerate your business growth and also the impact. And the women I work with, they're all impact driven. It's not about the money per se. It's about, I want to leave this world in a much better place. I want to create positive impact and I want to do that. But in order to do it, I had to be seen and heard. <laughs> right, right, right. I wish there was a way sometimes, you know, because there are so many impactful people who are, haven't reached that point. You just kind of want to, be able to sprinkle that magic dust to be able to make that impact without actually having to do to, to have this serve the face time. Um, <laughs> but, but it's just not, it does, they go hand in hand. You, you, you gotta do it. Um, and so you were, you have been very successful in transforming women's lives um, to allow them to be visible and accept themselves for who they are and really transform their lives through their businesses and their visibility. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know that on that journey, even though it's super fulfilling and, it, and we can hear and see that it's housed in your passions, there were a few things that were missing yeah. still, which can still. feel very, very conflicting. And I know, and I know it, I, I absolutely yeah. know it. And there's so many, so many people who are like, okay, yeah, but what about this? Or I should, oh, what the classic, I should be happy with this. Yes. Right? I got yes. everything I wanted, but why am I not? And now we're back to more guilt and shame. What the, what gives? <laughs> I know. And you think, oh, I've learned all this. Now I've learned and I've applied and there's solutions. Mm -hmm. yeah, I feel like honestly, my forties has been that almost, and I'm, I'm 49. I'll totally put it out there. I've been on this journey for nine years now. And I'm finally at the point where I've realized, and a lot of it was admitting it to myself. I had to get really used to trusting that that gut feeling. I've learned when I'm not expressing who I am in a way that feels good, that's when I start getting really negative about myself. That's when I feel like I'm not being authentic to who I am. And so this whole voice has been really discovering what works best for me and admitting that I'm not like anybody else. And I do not want to have a business like everybody else because it doesn't fit me. And I'd say in 2023, in this last year, it was this, this struggle again where, yeah, I was doing really well in my business. And I very, again, very gratefully, I replaced my corporate salary as a business owner. Um, 
in, in my first year, which is fantastic because I learned and I applied all, I didn't do the things I did the first time. I did different things to go from barely, not even surviving to thriving in my business. But then it became, there's again, the sense that I wasn't allowing all of myself to be seen. There's so many parts to myself. I had to sit back and a couple of times in 2023, I went invisible. I had to give myself that time to sit and reflect and get a bigger picture idea of what was going on, what was happening, what was I feeling, what was I thinking about myself and really creating this clear picture about you know, who am I at this point in my life, in my business, my disability journeys, I'm a mom, I'm a wife. And, and what is that that I truly want? What is my goals? Am I truly following in stepping towards them or have I gotten a little bit off path? Have I stepped away from things? And so I had to, so I had to, I, so in 2023, a couple of times I stepped away from social media because I had to stop seeing what was going on around me externally and again, mm-hmm. go internal. I don't believe in competition around what you see uh, on social media. It becomes, it just became on social media. It was just, but again, the mindset that well, other people seem to know what they, they do, or this right. is the only way to grow my business. It became, nope, I need to step away from social media to get away from the chatter, to get away from the noise, to like you said earlier and alluded to, to get really clear, to get much more clear so I can hear that inner voice. And it was, I I love corporate and I love the entrepreneurial world. I and we don't need to whisper world. about it. Know, we can talk about it. <laughs> So it's I like it's this taboo course. thing. It's like, oh, I'm on, I'm an entrepreneur because you get in here, and I just people go into entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, and they say it's because I hated corporate and it's horrible, and I wanted freedom, and corporate is stifling like a jail. But you're allowed to like corporate. You're allowed to like yes. your nine to five. Yes. Honest to goodness, you're allowed to. And if that means if you go into entrepreneurship and you're like, yeah, this is pretty killer. This is pretty boss. And I think I'd still like to go hang out with my colleagues. You're allowed yeah. to. You're you can be allowed yes. to. Yes. Yes. And that was something. So, yeah, we're going to shout it. I love <laughs> corporate and I love being an entrepreneur. So I've realized I am multi-passionate and I have really, I love being at both ends of the spectrum. Like I am completely analytical. My background in corporate is systems, processes, designs, and training. So very, I can get creative inside of a box. Mm-hmm. As an entrepreneur, I can get creative with no box. And I love that, but I love both. Growing up, I used to, I used to listen to heavy metal. My older brother loved heavy metal. So I grew up listening to and liking heavy metal, hard rock, but I also went to performing arts school and played strings. I loved classical. I love like these two polar opposite ends, which makes no sense, but I love them both. And well, I realized, isn't there, sorry, but I'm just going to call your bluff. Isn't, there, <laughs> isn't there a strings, um, group who does Metallica? I don't know. Maybe. My husband, my husband would know. I'm going to tag him. <laughs> I'm going to be like, tell us who it is. <laughs> because I'm pretty sure there is. I'm I pretty sure there's a, there's a strings group who does like Metallica and, and all sorts of hard rock. So Maybe. I'm just saying it's not I'm as just as yeah. it seems. And actually, I think if we get to the root of it, you're kind of saying the same thing. It's not as conflicting as it seems. Because you you house both of those realities. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I like to say now, I love to ride the fence and sit on the fence between entrepreneur and corporate world and have one shoe, exist with one shoe in each world. Or high heel. Connecting. Or high, yes, it's like a heel. It has to be a heel. <laughs> connecting and really connecting the best of one to the other because yeah. we need each other. We And it's this beautiful balance of it could be masculine and feminine the left and the right, and just whatever it is, that was where I was last year. I had to get over the mindset though of, oh, well, if I returned to corporate again, what are people gonna think? Is, people it, think? is it fair, is, is, is I fail? But I know I didn't fail my business because my business was successful, but it became this, no, instead of it seeing it as a very negative thing, a lot of mindset work again, around no, seeing it as this is who I am. This is the outcome of me really understanding and discovering who I am and where do I thrive? Mm-hmm. What environments do I thrive in? What kind of, how do I work? How do I work where I thrive? 
I love, I love being able to help others to create positive change and to grow their businesses. I don't have to do that necessarily as an entrepreneur or only as an entrepreneur. I can do that as someone who works for entrepreneurs. And that for me, because I was in 2023, again, it became this, ooh, again, the mental health was, I could could have very easily gone down that I failed again. And there's a shame again. And like, it became, no, 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 flipped it around. I said, no, look at all these successes I had. This is me. This is me expressing all of who I am. Because at the end of the day, if there's one thing I want, it's a show. It's another show, a platform, again, for others to be seen and heard on. In order for me to create that, I can do it as my own, as an entrepreneur, which satisfies that piece, which means I can do a more corporate type role or working for someone else that satisfies that. As long as it's the right opportunity, there's no one way to plan out your career. There's no one way to grow your business. There's no one way to have your business exist. That's the beauty. That's the beauty of where we are today in, in society and in our culture and our world. You can when you're, but you can have it all. I'm going to say have it all in quotations. Yeah, you yeah. can. You just have to be very clear on who you are, what it is that you want, and then take the steps from that place of this is good, this is positive. I'm moving forward to go and achieve and create it and make what you imagine visible. But it all comes from seeing that as a good because it is good, not from that place of shame or guilt. It's that, no, this is a place of me allowing myself to be and allowing myself to be me. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm kind of floored, actually, just by by the the amount of passion and vivacity that you bring to the conversation um, and and just allowing people, all of you to step into that sense, that state of being where you feel in alignment with who you are, regardless, regardless of what's going on around you. This world's freaking crazy, man. We know that. We are aware of that. We live in it, right? Let it be. And let yourself be whatever the heck you want it to be in the middle of it, because it's going to happen. Yeah. You're your own core. You're your own rock. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Now, if, if, there was a piece of advice that you wanted to give. And I mean, over and above, be yourself. I feel like there's a bluey episode about that. <laughs> Just be yourself. Um, that's a good one, actually. We quote that a lot. It's it's the one where, uh, I don't know if everybody knows Bluey, but Bluey is a great kids show. Highly recommend. Um, but the dad is going to a, a movie and then they're talking about being yourself. And then they start singing. And he goes, oh, man, there's songs. <laughs> It's just, sorry, it's it's a good one for any parent who's like, yeah, there's songs. We're going to sing about the color blue today. Um, <laughs> but truly, over and above, just be yourself. Because we get fed that a lot. And and that's, that's kind of why we're having these conversations. Because it's not enough to just say these grand proclamations. Be yourself. Be true to you. Um, I don't know. Let's get real. What yeah. what piece of advice can we mm. give to someone who's sitting there? Very, very real, lost, angry, but still sitting with hope. What's oh. next? What's next? What has worked for me and may work for others as well is if you're in that place, you're in a transition, you're in corporate and you're wanting to step out, or you're in you're an entrepreneur and you're realizing, oh, this is not feeling good to me. Something's not working. And potentially, again, maybe thinking I have to transition back and seeing it as a negative, it becomes step back, pause. What worked for me is I had to pause. I had to become invisible to the external world in order to shut out the noise and to really start listening to myself and to give myself the time and the space and the grace to be honest with myself, to get clear on exactly what it is that I want at this point in my time, at this point in time in my career, in my business, in my life, realizing that it can change and I can change as my career, business and life changes. But for me, it became, I had to get quiet. I had to become invisible 
ask myself the hard questions and be very, very honest. What is it that I want? What is most important? Prioritize and then be okay with just taking one step at a time, that one step, not worrying about what are other people going to think. And that, that was hard. Again, people pleaser, not worrying because at the end of the day, it's all about me. And if I can't be happy, if I'm not showing up as my best self every day, if my mental health is starting to, to wane and I'm, I'm not the best person I could be for myself and then others, it's just, it's not worth it for me. I've gone, I've had burnout. I've had being very, very mean to myself, very mean. And I'm not going back there. It's a commitment I've made to myself. But realizing it's sometimes you've got to be invisible to really understand and bring to the surface and to make visible what is it, who, who it is that you want to be, who you are, and to really make visible what it is that you want to see. So that's what I had to do. So for anyone, it just becomes, sometimes it, you're so focused on the outside and the external. Stop, pause, give yourself some grace, give yourself time and space, go within and really become visible again from the inside out. Hmm. So practice the pause is what I'm hearing. Practice Ooh. the pause. This is something that I've taught my kids from, from day one because we can get ahead of ourselves. And um, I think that's a great, uh, a great idea, a great concept to leave you all with as we move on to bigger, brighter things. Practice the pause. <sighs> There's a way through and it might not be the way you thought it was in the first place. <laughs> as noted by Danielle's wonderful story. Now with that, keep in mind, there are a lot of stories just like this. You are not alone. So make sure you stay tuned, like, follow, share, subscribe, so that you don't miss another episode of Marketing Rebels and this special series where we're talking about marketing momentum for mental health. Danielle, thank you again for being on the show. We will chat again soon.